Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I sculpted the head for this commission. It is a hyena commission, something a little bit different. And uh, the request was one eye was blind or damaged or something. It's totally up to me, so I went with the blind one. Alright, so I sculpted this out of Sculpey Original. It's I prefer to work with Sculpey Original over Super Sculpey. Just because I like working with things that are a bit softer over things that are a bit harder, uh, it's a lot easier on my hands. So what I'm doing is I'm just covering some aluminium foil with the Sculpey. So by using the aluminium foil, that means that the piece will be a lot lighter. So you don't have to use such a heavy duty armature um, and it is easier to pose. So right now I'm working on the upper snout area and just building some um, basic foundations for the way um, a, basically a hyena skull looks. So over on my left I have um, some reference photos and even a skeleton of hyenas. I always work with reference photos up um, so if you're having a hard time getting the anatomy right on your sculptures definitely have some reference photos handy and it will help you a lot. All right, so just doing a little place marker for the lower jaw as well and also working on the nose area um, and I like to do I have like a set pattern that I sculpt in so I usually do um, the, t the top muzzle area and then the lower jaw and then I work on the nose area and then I'll move on to the eye area and then all the other little details at the end of that. Now these little ball tools are from Sculpey uh, themselves. I found them in a local craft store uh, here in Australia, but you can find them online. They're pretty readily available. They are a little bit more pricey than um, finding some ball tools on eBay or something like that. But yeah, these ones are the Sculpey brand and I've never had a problem with them. I find them really, really handy. And you can also find all sorts of metal tools on eBay and um, websites like that as well that will help you um, sculpt so you don't have to spend a lot of money to get some good sculpting tools. And adding some more to the lower jaw, um, this is called additive sculpting. There's also subtractive sculpting where you carve out certain details. Um, I like to do both. You kind of have to do both when you're sculpting. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much like to do additive a little bit more um, just because it's just the way and the style that I sculpt in. And moving on to the ears, so I'm just sort of putting a base ear down. Um, ears are very important when you're sculpting animals because a lot of them have um, tiny little details that are very specific to that animal. So if you don't really get the details right, then it ends up looking like a totally different species altogether. So um, in, again, important to have those reference photos and just referring back to your sculpt, uh, you can even hold it up against the reference photos and see where um, you've gone wrong or what doesn't look right. Uh, I find ears to be challenging myself just because um, they are so specific to the species of animal that you're doing. So if you get it on the wrong angle or it's too thick or something, then it ends up just looking wrong and not what you're trying to sculpt. Thank you. 
And also another thing to remember when doing ears is to try to make them symmetrical. Uh, not too symmetrical, just ne not everything is symmetrical in, in life. Um, but just have your sculpture and move it around a little bit, change the, um, the way you look at it and see what doesn't look right and what's out of place. And that way it will point out any um, anything that looks a bit weird or stuff like that if you just move it around a bit. And eye placement is pretty much the same as ear placement. You want to make sure they are in the right um, spots and that they're symmetrical. One's not higher, one's not further pushed out because then it looks a bit weird. Um, so always uh, rotate your sculpture around and get a view of some different angles. So I'm going to build up the eyelids here and I like to use little wormy bits of um, clay to build up my eyes. Uh, but you can do it any way you like, I just like to do it with little worm bits. Um, and that way I can control how um, the, uh, the, the character will look as well. So I can move the eyelids down or up or anything or make it angry, make it sad, whatever you want to do. I find moving little worm bits around uh, really works for me. And I'm going to start doing some subtractive sculpting around the eye area just so I can get those little structural details. Uh, hyenas have a very um, strange face. It's not so wolf-like and it's not like a cat or anything uh, or a dog. They've got little areas that are sunken in and areas that are more pronounced. So again, uh, you need to look at the anatomy of animals when you're sculpting. And at this point I thought my hyena was a bit way too thin uh, so I wanted to bulk up the head a little bit so just adding sort of sausages of clay around um, the back end of the head. And they also have like uh, a peak at the top of their head. So uh, I, I know like wolves and stuff don't have that. They've got like a, a bit that goes in, but hyenas have a little bit of a peak. So when you're sculpting a hyena, definitely keep that in mind because it changed the way my sculpture looked completely and it made it look way more like a hyena than what I had it as before. All right, so the customer also requested that this hyena was a little bit beaten up and it had little rips in its ears and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just carve out some little rip shapes in the ears using a little blade. Um, and I find the blade works really well when you wanna cut sections out. And then I'm just go ahead and smooth the edges around so it's not such a sharp look. Um, but yeah, I find this way looks uh, works a bit better.
I'm pretty sure it's about uh, complete the sculpture so I'm just going to add a little bit of fur detailing around the muzzle area and the eyes. I'm not going to do the entire head because I'm not casting it um, and I will be co covering majority of it in fur anyway so I'm not going to waste my time and detail the whole head um, because it is very very time consuming. Um, so I don't really want to have to waste too much time if I'm just going to cover it in fur anyway. And I like to use this little needle tool. It just came in a kit of um, pottery tools. Uh, I find this one to be like my most useful tool. Uh, it's great for sculpting fur details. Um, there's no right or wrong way to sculpt fur details. I find this works um, for me, but you can use like a plastic wrapper and scrape out some fur details with that. I just like doing it this way. And I also like sculpting um, the fur details around the eye area as well because I find that I can actually control the way um, the details look as well and I can kind of blend it in a bit more and make it look like more of the sculpt rather than just a bunch of sausages that are stuck on a clay piece. So I find it works really well um, for that reason and I find that I can um, actually carve out some more uh, details and um, little crevices and stuff as well when I'm uh, adding the fur details. And here's my hyena head ready to be painted and put together. So that is it for me today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any video requests you can leave it in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!